I I know a little bit of your story, maybe enough to be dangerous. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so I think that's a great place to start. I'd love for you to just share a little bit about your journey and especially like what's happened over the last seven years or so. Yeah, um, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll step back and look at from a perspective that, uh, you know, I practice in a little town called Granbury, Texas, which is about 7000 people. And it's a little bit about 40 minutes west and south of uh, Fort Worth in Texas. And the great thing about that is, is that if we can make things work in Granbury for the type of dentistry doing full arch implant dentistry and all the different cosmetics that we do and, and offer in our practice, if we can do that in this little town. It can be done anywhere. That's one of the, the key mm -hmm. components that everybody's got to get an opportunity to see. Um, but really starting back in, I want to just actually jump all the way back to 2013 for a minute towards the end of that. And I had this idea that it was going to be a great idea to open up a second practice and do that from scratch. And so right at the end of that year, beginning of 2014, I did that. And I did it in a in a location that was about 52 miles away from my main practice here in Granbury. And it was done with the auspice that I was gonna create a practice there, be able to oversee it, you know, and go over there about one day a week and, and look at that. And, and the truth was, is that, by doing that from scratch, I got to put and build exactly what I wanted in there, which was great. But it was also very difficult because it put a very big constraint and a lot of weight on my shoulders from the point of making sure that I was going to meet payroll, making sure that I was going to meet all my supplies and, and all the demands of overhead, as you know, that continue to skyrocket mm -hmm. all the time and be able to market and be able to draw in the types of patients. Now, luckily I have a really good way of doing that in our main practice. So I've learned a lot over the years mm -hmm. for doing that. But nonetheless, when you're creating from scratch, right. it takes a while to build. <laughs> it takes a while to build that momentum. And I'll be honest with you, what it felt like, and maybe some of you guys can relate to this, but it felt like I was giving myself and I did just give myself a second job, you know, because looking back at it, hindsight, it would have been easier just to add another day to my practice if I really wanted to do that. And what I found was, is that especially toward the first couple of years, is I was going over there and I was producing so much on my Fridays in order to meet the overhead, in order to pay the bills and everything to get it going. The man, it really taxed me. It taxed me physically, emotionally, mentally. And I didn't have the great tools or the capacity at that time to deal with that type of stress. And so unfortunately, what I did was just take and push all that mm -hmm. down. Because mm -hmm. that's what I was taught as a kid is like, listen, <laughs> and men don't show a lot of emotion. Men don't cry. Men, <laughs> men just fortify and work their way through. And, and that's how you show up as a resilient stoic man. That was my right. examples growing right. up. And so I did that. And as I pushed down the stress and as I pushed down all of those feelings at some time, they've got to erupt. And for me, the times when they erupted were the worst times because it was on and with the people that I cared about the most, which was my family. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes it was with and on my wife where that eruption occurred or with the kids and it started to create almost, and, and this is just being very vulnerable and saying this, it was almost as if I was operating as an emotional terrorist. Mm -hmm. And it was that opportunity for me to purge those feelings of that overwhelm and that stress. And I didn't have any other type of release to do that. And it was just so unhealthy. And the other thing that I was choosing to do to cope with that was I was drinking every single night, uh, drinking alcohol. I would sedate with alcohol just to look at numbing that stress or that pain and just using it to look at trying to get away from that for just a small period of time. Well, as you can understand, I had really crappy sleep when you're drinking a lot. And I certainly did not feel like getting up the next day and working out or anything of that nature. Matter of fact, it was everything I could do to drag myself out of bed without hitting snooze three or four times mm -hmm. and go through my day. 
and then make it through my day and, and hope that I was going to be productive and hope that I was going to have a great opportunity to close cases and hope that, you know, I was going to be able to show up and lead at some type of capacity in either practice. The longer that that went on, the more taxing it became not only on me, but my team members. And obviously then on my home and my home life. And I finally had a wake up call when one of the nights it was a Friday night, my wife and I both were drinking wine that night and we both had had enough to drink. And she finally stopped me in my tracks when we were having an argument. And she said, Jeff, I didn't sign up for this shit. She said, the kids and I walk around here every day on eggshells and all we want to do is love you and you come home and just blow up on us. And I remember sitting there and I didn't even have a response because it was the truth. And I remember sitting there in bed that night and, you know, I was 18 inches apart from her, but I felt like I was miles apart in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I remember just praying to God and saying, God, I know that I created this. I know that I'm responsible for this but please support me and help myself, help my family and show me a way out. And so he did. I ended up being put in touch with some mentors and some coaches. And I took all of that information and I applied it radically and rapidly in my life. And I started to see things shift. And I just talked about this yesterday. There's a big difference and a big difference in dynamics between change and transformation. Mm. And I was after transformation because I knew that that was what was going to be required in order to achieve the results that mm. I wanted to achieve, mm. not only with my family, but my business and everywhere else. Change is like making tweaks and keeping, maybe making a change to a process, but not a whole system. Right. It's more sometimes an extrinsic, extrinsic thing. Transformation is from within internally, typically, and it is about completely overhauling the system. And so that's what was required for me. And within literally six months, I would say I was unrecognizable to the man that I was when I started my relationship with my wife, totally changed 180 degrees. My relationship with my children totally changed 180 degrees. I began to realize that my family was actually my superpower. Mm -hmm. One of my superpowers, because listen, when things are great at home, I can go in and I can kill it in the mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. I'm on fire. I've just, the mm -hmm. energy's different. But if I have a fight with my wife that morning, I go in and I'm, I suck that day compared to what I could be, mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah. I can still do reasonably great dentistry, but not in a way that is empowering to our patients, not in a way that is edifying our team members who work so hard, not in a way that I can show up and actually lead from the forefront. When I'm showing up and I've had a battle with my wife or something along those lines, I'm just looking to survive through the day as opposed to showing up like a leader who's ready to thrive and take on any chaos that shows up because let's face it, in a dental practice, you have to feel, and if you don't, then maybe you haven't practiced long enough, but if you don't feel like a little bit of a firefighter, then I don't think you have practiced long enough. Mm. And because we get hit with this barrage of different chaotic things mm -hmm. through the day. And if you have not set yourself up to win your day ahead of time, then you're going to be playing this game of catch up and you're going to be playing this game of like stress and you start to feel overwhelmed. But when you've already won your day before you show up, it's a very different dynamic and you show up in a different place of power. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And there was a lot that you said there. So thank you for all that. Thank you for the, the vulnerable sharing of that, because I think there's bound to be things in that where those watching us, listening to us can find some of themselves in there. Uh, I really do believe, I mean, that's further confirmation of my own experience that you know, if from a faith perspective that in reaching out to God, God answers those cries for help. He's done that for me on many occasions. I like the the idea that distinction between change and transformation. So I was picturing this wholesale change of like the caterpillar into the into the beautiful butterfly, right? That's not just some incremental something. That's like like you're new. You're you're made new in that. Yes. And it sounds like that's like you've been given in your willingness and your calling out, you've been given 
a, another chance, right? It's almost like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Here we are at Christmas, watch that again with family. Yes. And it's like realizing that the place of gratitude for how, what we really do have that we were missing in the midst of, of those negative the stresses that had become so negative. So I think there's, I think there's so much power in the story. So let me ask you this. So how often do you think it is that people, I mean, speaking minimally of change, let alone transformation that we need to get to a place of burnout, like to mm. the end of our rope, we need to our lives need to come apart in some more obvious way before we're available, before we're like, I'm open for something different. Man, that is such a powerful question. And because a lot of it is question around like, do I need to actually hit rock bottom before like I say, listen, I want something different for myself. Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question for me is, in order for an individual to transform, they have to be at least shook enough to be woke up, like wake this person up, wake up their soul. Like, God, I just want to mm -hmm. shake you and wake you up to a new possibility. And if that means that they've got hit rock bottom for that individual, in some cases, that's right. And in some cases, it's just having enough drama in their life where they're like, holy cow, I don't want this in my life anymore. And it's really a lot of times, typically a recognition of something negative that they no longer want to have in their life. Mm -hmm. And once that becomes a strong enough pull, then there is this intrinsic mm -hmm. pull from within that says, okay, I see something different that I can look at having and that I desire. And then I'm going to pull myself in that direction or point myself in that direction and look at what is the pathway or what pathway can I seek mm -hmm. through the help of others or on my own in order to get to where I desire to be. And so it's interesting because I've even sat and thought about that question from the perspective of like, why do we burn out? And there's so many different answers to that, right? I mean, it can be, we're not aligned with our purpose. There's a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I'll even have you consider that there's even a different concept and idea that I've even thought about lately. And it's the fact that part of it is, I believe that sometimes we can become over-reliant on some of our superpowers. Because mm -hmm. think about this, especially us as dentists, we have this uncanny ability to be able to hyper-focus through procedures that can be extended periods of time. Now, that is an amazing superpower. Mm -hmm. And having the ability to be able to connect and listen and mm -hmm. really truly be present with another individual, that is a superpower. But when you overload that or overdose on those superpowers, mm -hmm. like that ability to hyper-focus for such long periods of time, I believe that that's also something that can lead us into overwhelm and burnout. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Because part of what is set up for us naturally to win, if used in too much of that right. fashion, it can really tax us and empty our cup. Right. Yeah. And so- I am a firm believer that we've got to fill up our cup first in order to overflow and be able to overflow onto others. And so if my cup is not filled first, and if I have not taken care of myself mm -hmm. in the yes. morning, right. with taking care of everything to put myself in a great place of power, then every interaction that I make with an individual along the way becomes what? It becomes transactional mm -hmm. because I don't have enough to give. Therefore, if I give you something, I right. need to have something in return. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to be even more empty than from when we started. Right. Yeah. However, if I've already won the day, now I can freely give to you. And I know that there's this abundance mentality because I can recreate it again throughout the day and the next day. And it becomes something that is easy to not only recreate, but it is also sustainable. So to answer your question, I don't believe that everybody needs to hit rock bottom, but I do believe that there has to be something that wakes you up to a point right. of a new possibility. Right. And in some individuals, that's drama. And, it, and here's the way I think 
God uniquely works. I believe that God sends us messages all the time. And he's showing us signs all along the way to the path. And here's the deal. that <laughs> You might miss some of those signs. And so what maybe starts out as a little bit of drama, right? it's like, hey, you better take this exit and you miss that sign. And then the next one is like, okay, you better turn here and you miss that sign. And then, oh my gosh, I'm telling you right now, you better make a right hand turn and you miss that sign. And the next sign is, oh, by the way, the bridge is out as you're launching off <laughs> into nowhere land. Right, yeah. And now what you seem to be a little bit of drama has turned into something major of a trauma. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what it takes to wake an individual up. Yeah, that's good. I think it's easy to wake a man or a woman up because when you go through a series and you start to look at exactly where they're at and getting real with the facts of what it is today, and they have the opportunity to get honest with themselves and vulnerable with themselves and really ask themselves the hard questions, it becomes easy to wake somebody up. And you can consider what's the new possibilities. And when you can show somebody that, it becomes easy to get excited about that. I think what becomes more difficult is keeping that individual awake. That's what I think is also more difficult. Yeah, that's good. Uh, a lot of good stuff in there. I, it made me think about, um, I use strengths-based assessments in my mm -hmm. coaching work and I'm looking through that lens on a regular basis to personalize that coaching. And so everybody has strengths. Yes. And with every strength, to your point about those superpowers of hyper-focusing and engaging with people in it for extended periods of time every every style every strength profile that anybody brings there's overextensions right of that same strength right and i think that's part of what you're saying also made me think not that i'm trying to make a pitch for this book but made me think of this book that i'm reading right now called positive intelligence which mm -hmm. In the author brings up in there about kind of hidden saboteurs. So sometimes we're not always free <clears throat> to be able to move forward. Um, I've been having those conversations with different people about, you know, things of as we get to year end and look forward to a new year, like what are some of those things that maybe we need to, we need to shred so that we yes. can be free to move on. So the idea of, are we free to move on? Are we even free to change? What is it that we're not seeing? Because part of his point is if, that the, the power over us to hold us in stuck places is often these, these things that, these patterns that we don't really see, these hidden saboteurs that you don't have to fight them. You just have to shine the light on them and they lose yes. their power to control you because now you can just see it for what it is. Now you've got freedom where you didn't have freedom before. Does that kind of fit in with some of what you're seeing? Totally does. And it's very apropos for this time of year. Um, this time of year, I always sit down and I have spent this last month really refining what I call the impossible game, my impossible game targets. And I, I deal with four areas in four domains of life, my body. So my health and my fitness, my being, my spirituality, my purpose, my balance, which is my relationships, starting with my wife and kids, people that I love and people that love me and care about me, my team members, my clients, my patients. And then lastly, my business. And so when I look at those four domains, body, being, balance, and business, I'm creating my impossible games in all four of those domains for 2024. Now, in order to do that, I've got to be grounded in the reality of today. And to your point and to the point of the author of the book that, listen, we all have stories and we all grew up with individuals having influence into our lives, whether that be our parents, whether that be our teachers, whether that be our coaches, whether that be our church members, all of these people have breathed influence into our life that has led to our laws, our rules, our dynamics, and our worldview, the way in which we see the world, mm -hmm. and our self-view, the way in which we see ourselves. Now, Matthew, I can tell you and I just even talking like this, 
there is very big similarities in our worldview, the way in which we mm -hmm. see the world. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some people that you'll talk to and it's just like an instant collision. Right, right. And that is those two frames colliding, those two worldviews colliding because they're so different. Doesn't mean either one is wrong. Right. It just means that, look, if we were to go back and look at the influences in our lives, there would be some similarities that we could find and that we mm -hmm. could see and that we could mm -hmm. look at and go, this is why this feels right. This is why you can meet somebody and be like, man, I feel like I've known this person right. forever. Right, right, yeah. And that's right why that is. But getting back to like setting your targets and everything for that reality for this next year, we have to take into account what are those stories and the stories when they're told long enough, then become the behaviors. And that's what then starts to drive our actions mm -hmm. to look at bringing things to fruition. So I would tell you when you sit there and go, well, gosh, I deserve to be here in life. I would really challenge you on that and say, you're right where you are supposed to be. And the reason you're right where you're supposed to be is because of your current level of actions or your inactions that have you there. Now, if you don't like where you're at right now, the great news is, is there's no better person on the planet to look at transforming that than you. Right. Because you're the creator of where you're at, yeah. which is beautiful. Yeah. So just as you said, Matthew, shining the light on there and taking and doing some self-reflection, that's a big deal. And that's why I think to me, and this is plain wordsmithing, that's why I don't like goals. That's why I like targets. Mm -hmm. Goals to me are a lot more generalized and more like a shotgun approach of like, hey, I'm just going to spray it out here and hope that it hits as opposed to a target is like, I'm looking down the scope like a sniper and I want to hit the bullseye. I'm very hyper-focused or like the racehorses mm -hmm. that have you know, the blinders on. They're just focused on one thing, getting through to the finish line. And that's it. And so when I look at that, it gives me an opportunity to practice strategic ignorance. Mm. And now I can really focus on what it is that I want. And it's done in a process that once you're clear on, look, look, just a simple framework, get really clear on where you're at today, the facts of today, mm -hmm. then get really clear on what it is that you want 12 to 18 months out. Because if you build on the facts of today, knowing that, and then now you create this out here, there's actually a much higher potential of that becoming a reality. If you build on what most people do at this time of year, which is I'm going to make a new year's resolution and I'm going to pull something, I'm going to pull a number out of my rear end. This is the year that I'm going to have $10 million in the bank account. Well, listen, if you don't have a capacity to have a million dollars in the bank account, the likelihood of you having 10 by the end of this year is zero, <laughs> right? Right. So let's get grounded in reality of today. Now, when we create something that is in the future, we have the opportunity and the possibility to create something that is actually factually based that we can obtain or that we can attain and hit. Now the secret is let's reverse engineer that and let's work through the mechanisms in order to obtain that. And that's exactly what it is that we do. That's what I've been doing, gosh, for the past six plus years. And, and it works. That's been the only thing that I've found to work for me that has kept me consistent and continuing to grow and expand year after year after year. Look, I'm very ADD. I need systems in my life. Otherwise, I'm like, squirrel, what? Huh? <laughs> and there's a lot of bright, shiny things that are very distracting. Because there is so many amazing things on this planet to be a part of. But I have to learn to practice strategic ignorance. Otherwise, it fractures my focus all the time and pulls me off from where I'm wanting to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes great sense. And I kind of hybrid blend a lot of those things I feel like you've shared today. It makes me think of a mentor of mine who said that we don't get in accordance with what we want. We get in accordance with who we are which yes. kind of then fits with with that's those those targets that you're talking about and where are you now but also prioritizes back to what some of those other things you were saying earlier about beginning with your own self-care your own you know bringing the importance of god spouse kids priorities in life then 
you know, because there's, I think a lot of times we can set these goals or targets or whatever we call them <clears throat> out there. And it can be a very transactional kind of like, here's the tactics to deploy to get it, but I'm not going to get it because I'm what I keep getting is in accordance with who I am, which comes back to the leadership in the business. Just like yes. all the people who talk about if my, my office manager, if you could just fix my office manager, all yeah. would be well with my life. <laughs> yeah. Then we find out there were six other office managers over the previous couple of years, right. which the common denominator might be you, you. <laughs> you know, but, Magically, but we you. have a hard time with that. In general, I think we humans, we have a harder, we have an easier time seeing those things that are out there. We think it's all out there. And so I'm just kind of, as I'm blending all these great things that you're saying, it it's, it's kind of covers all of that. There are things out there, there are targets out there, but who am I as that leader walking that path? And am I living to deserve those things that I'm hoping for? Yeah. Please say that one more time for me. Cause I think that what you said was brilliant. What the mentor told you with the way of being. Yeah. That we don't get in accordance with what we want. We get in accordance with who we are. Yes. Because guess what? We will absolutely live into who it is. We believe ourselves to be 100%. Yeah. So when you have patients that are like, oh, well, I've always been a smoker. Well, congratulations. You're going to stay a smoker. <laughs> Perfect. Because you're labeling yourself that right. and that's no problem. Yeah. As opposed to, hey, up until now, I was a smoker, but now I'm interested in, you know, changing my oral health. So up until now, I was a smoker and now I am absolutely committed to looking at having that be a different aspect of my life mm -hmm. or having that be a part of my past life. I'm going to take the steps in order to make and how, that and how powerful is that? How much freedom is there in that? That's so, that's so good. And it seems like it, like how long does that take for us to get to these places? So that, I mean, you shared some of your story of it took a little time and it took a collision. It usually often takes yeah. something. So I feel like we could talk for hours and, and uh, maybe we will continue this conversation because I really absolutely have been enjoying it. I would love to hear before we wrap up, um, just in the work that you're doing, how you see, and I know you talked about some of the different components you focus on, but how you see your greatest impact contribution to people mm -hmm. based upon what you've learned. Yeah, I think with Brooke, the greatest impact that I can have is, is it became very clear to me that, look, I believe that we're all called by God to do something but it's up to you to answer. And so when I became really clear about my purpose or my soul's purpose on this planet, which is to look at upgrading and transforming lives, then it becomes very simple in whatever I is or whoever I'm interacting with, right? Because when I apply that to my dentistry, I get the best opportunity through doing implant dentistry to absolutely transform somebody's life. Mm. Take somebody that has been a recluse and not, you know, engaged in going out to dinner with their family or their friends or saying no to the parties and, and just taking and totally tucking back and isolating and watching the transformation that happens for that individual. When you give them the gift of health and the ability to function and have the confidence with a smile, watching their whole personality transform is magical. That's great. And the same thing is magical when I watch my clients, when they get clear on where they are and where they want to be. And then also having frameworks. I, I teach five simple frameworks that allow an individual to a get really honest with themselves. And we call it live by a code that's living in integrity. That's the first thing that we've got to look at is how does that happen? Going back to some of the things we talked about. Mm -hmm. The second thing we look at is having an opportunity to reframe events, stories, triggers that happen in our life. If I had this tool back when I was having all the issues in my second practice and with my marriage and everything else, it would have completely revamped a lot of that. Having the opportunity to shift <clears throat> or reframe 
a tar or excuse me, <clears throat> a trigger or an event is so powerful. And not only uh, allowing an individual to feel better or feel less stressed, but most importantly, receiving a revelation from there, a lesson learned from there. And then the most important thing is taking an action derived from what you just finished doing and then making it applicable in life within the next 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Just that alone is so powerful. Awesome. The other thing, Matthew, is, is that learning that most individuals are leaking power, meaning, and when I say the word power, there's going to be a lot of connotations that come up in somebody's mind. Power can be good. Power can be bad. I'm going to ask you to put your judgment of the word power aside and just think of the, the word power as meaning the capacity to do. Okay. And I realized I was leaking power in a big way with the example that I gave earlier with my family that was costing me significantly right. because all of those things where we're not living in abundance, where we're living more in scarcity. And I was definitely in scarcity with my family. I was definitely in scarcity with my relationship with God. Hmm. I was in scarcity with my relationship with my body and my fitness. And all of those things cascade through all the other areas in life. And in, in a fashion that is compromising. And so when we can take and actually move from scarcity to abundance in those four areas that I was talking about, body, being, balance, and business, that puts a man or a woman in a place of power that allows them to have a greater capacity. And with that capacity, they have a better opportunity to be a better leader in their practice because they're choosing to lead themselves the first thing. Right, right. They have a better opportunity to be a leader in their family. They have a better opportunity to show up and be a better boss. They have a better opportunity to lead their patients mm -hmm. in a dynamic fashion. They have a better opportunity to be a better husband, a better father, a better wife, a better, a better mother. When you can do that, and you can also create a better relationship with God and have the opportunity to create I, you know, it was interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll pause here. And this is my ADD kicking in for a second. Growing up Catholic, there was a lot of Catholic guilt and guilt is a very, a very tough emotion and dynamic to deal with. And if you ever look up the Hawkins scale, mm -hmm. guilt is one of those things that is so low energy. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is one of the highest energies on that scale. Mm -hmm. And that's why gratitude and appreciation are so powerful. But looking at it from that perspective, my relationship with God at the time was so questionable and I got divorced in 2012. And when I did in the Catholic church said, you can no longer take uh, communion. That was this, it was almost as if I was being alienated. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this was the religion that I grew up in. And so it hurt walking away from that. Cause I didn't feel, I didn't feel like I belonged anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to isolate when we feel like that. Mm -hmm. But what I'll have you consider is the work I do every day. I'm in conversation with God every day. And I used to look at prayer as almost if, if it was like a begging, mm -hmm. please, God, let this happen. Mm -hmm. Please let Thank this come into my life. Or I will do this. If this happens, <laughs> it was, it was a bargaining right. tool. Yeah. As opposed to today, which is much more like an open dialogue and conversation that I get to have. And my ability to communicate and connect with God on a daily basis has been probably one of the most profound experiences that I've been able to have to give me a closeness as well as a guidance mm -hmm. in my daily operations. Does that make sense? Makes I sense. hope I communicated that you well. Communicated it very well. Yes. And and thank you for going to that place and and sharing that because I'm certain that there's somebody or some some buddies who needed to hear that today. So Yeah. So course. thank you. So thank you. Absolutely. So so for all the people who have listened to us and said, hmm, this is interesting. And it would like to reach out and connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? 
you can find me a couple different ways. And one of the best ways you can find me, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Jeff Buski, B-U-S-K-E. You can find me there and give me a DM, or you can find me on LinkedIn. Again, uh, you can find me Jeff Buski on LinkedIn, B-U-S-K-E. Very simple. Send me a message. And that's one of the best ways. You can also check out the Lim uh, Limitless Dentist Academy and LimitlessDentistAcademy.com just to find out a little bit more about what it is that I do, how I coach, how I consult, and what's important and why we do our masterminds the way that we do them. Um, I've got a real fun uh, live event coming up in uh, April, second week in April, and that will be down in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. And that's where we'll actually be going through and doing some of the things that we talked about today, where we take and really get clear on those impossible games so we can set you up to win the whole rest of the year in 2024. And there's a great place down there. It's, it's really cool because it's a, a private villa. We have a private chef. It's, it's an amazing experience. It's a small group experience. But with some other fun little surprises booked in there. That's great. If you ever work with me, you'll realize that I like to have a lot of fun with what I do and the people that I interact with because I believe that life should be a lot of fun. And for a portion of my life, I forgot that. Mm. And it's one of the most important things I can at least share with you as we as we finish up and wrap up here today is make sure you don't lose your fun. And if you have lost it, go ahead and find it again. Find that childlike, you know, simplicity. And, and that childlike curiosity, because those are the things that keep you young. And those are the memories that start to be created because at the end of our life, listen, all the stuff that we have, it's really meaningless. It's about the experiences and the adventures that we get to create along the way. That's great, Jeff. Well, thank you. I so appreciate your time today and just your, your willingness to share and contribute. And it's been, it's been great value and I'm certain that it's been appreciated. So, so thank you for awesome. that. Thank you guys. Great. Have an opportunity to speak with you guys today and hopefully something that I said today will be useful for you guys. That's great. Thank you. you but I appreciate everybody uh, watching us. This is uh, the truth behind dentistry podcast and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.